Well, I've traveled from Tennessee to far northern Michigan where I've purchased this storage unit because behind this door, sealed, untouched for 22 years, is one of the most iconic cars ever built in the world. A 1987 Buick Regal T-Type factory turbocharged. I'm also told it's low miles. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this car running and attempt to drive it 750 miles back home in Southern Tennessee. So when I purchased this vehicle, I sent the money and hoped that a title and keys would show up, and they did. I got the storage unit key and two random GM keys. I didn't know the unit number, and this key, walking around this morning, randomly opened up another unit that had a snowmobile and some ice fishing equipment. And boy, did my heart sink. Then I called and confirmed it's this unit. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. Again, this car has not seen daylight in 22 years. Oh yes, beautiful. It's like a dark, dark maroon. Looks to be in really, really good shape. Of course, these tires are flat. These tires are flat. Wow. It's got T-tops. This is the first time I'm seeing this car in person. I saw a couple photographs, which, you know, they were old. So you never really know what you're getting into. The emblems are turning green some sort of environmental reaction or something. Not quite sure. It's got the factory exhaust still on it, I can see over here. You can see where water has dripped a little bit through the years, through the roof here. But that's it. Unfortunately, the owner of this car had passed away, and the wife lovely woman she found out about well what's this reoccurring charge for a storage unit lo and behold the old timer stuck this away over two decades ago i'm sure he had intentions to probably sell it something like that i don't see any rust i don't see any body damage so far here's how the keys were sent to me buick keys and the lock key which we already used. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the door key off, ignition key, open this thing up. Oh, it worked. Oh, wow. It doesn't even smell bad. That's incredible. 66,000 original miles. Yes! I'm kind of getting nervous. It's obviously way too nice for me. But we got to get it out of here. We got to put this thing back on the road. It should not just be sitting in here like this. It's The seals are so good, the air is stopping it from closing unless you really give her. It doesn't smell bad. It smells like 2001 when it was parked. Just Buick guy stuff. Crazy. Okay, so here's the plan. Remember the independent Chevelle when I bought that and I had it towed to a motel parking lot where I worked on it there and then tried to drive it back home? Well, we're in that same scenario. We're in cottage country, way northern Michigan. There's no car rentals and Ubers and taxis and parts stores and tool stores, nothing. Tire stores, 
So it's going to be pretty well impossible to try to get this thing on the road right here. So what we're going to do is, I brought a truck and trailer, we're going to roll this thing out, get it on a trailer, and take it to a friend's house. He's, his in-laws have a shop there. And I'm going to work on it there. It's just south of here. Try to get this thing patched back up and running. And then we'll take off from there and try to go 750 miles back home. So I'm going to air up these tires. Hopefully they hold air. I, didn't, I don't have any other tires. So, And then we'll try to throw this in neutral, push it outside, take a look at it for the first time in the sun. Get this thing loaded up and book it back. I am fired up and really excited to start working on this thing. I can't wait to clean this and just see what it looks like under all that dirt. Intentionally didn't get the Grand National package or the GNX, which was out the same year. They went down the build sheet and specifically ordered a maroon Regal. Just throw a turbo on it. That's what's so crazy. So I just got down here to air the tire up. This was not here a few minutes ago. And from slamming the door a few times, in the perfect shape of a frame, is like crunched up Doritos in the color of a frame, basically. That's, um, that is a concern, but I can't really maneuver or do anything in here. So I think we're still gonna just try to roll it out and then we'll take a look at that. Hopefully it's just surface rust. All right. Captain side rear. It is the frame. Really scaly. The tire date code. These were put on in 1998. <laughs> so that would have been two, three years before it was parked. There's still tons of tread on them. So they just put new tires on it basically. And based on the miles, hardly drove it and then backed it in here. Two winters and summers this car has cycled through. Think about that. That's all that's dripped. It, rad might be empty. I don't know what they did for that, but it's pretty wild. You can actually see the car on the concrete. This must be from the brakes. Scraping off rust as we were rolling it. <laughs> Never seen anything like that. And I've been doing this a long time. We've got the tea rolled into the shop here and this is going to be home for the next few days or until I can get this thing running and hopefully back on the road and make my way back to Tennessee. And I think we can finally get both doors open, the trunk, the hood, and really take a close look at this. And then I got to get this thing washed and we got to start digging in. Guys, going to start back here in the trunk. I always like to take a gander, see if there's any engine parts, pieces, things like that. Wow, clean. I think we're safe actually. It is clean. I think that's uh, T top bags, original space saver spare. We got the jack o' later. This is fantastic. So, this is the list of RPO codes, and I can already see LC2, which is the 3.8 liter turbocharged J47, 
That's the uh, Regal Coupe. Posi Tractions. That basically tells you everything about the car and how it was built. Looks like it got some Mobile One. 530. Back there, but clean. Really clean. This interior is incredible. Some webs or leaves or something. Getting into the passenger side for the first time. Really clean. Got a light bulb or something on the floor over there. Never been smoked in. We got all sorts of digicals and doodabs. Oh yeah, she's set to rock and roll. I like that. Gotta have a tape player. It's in great shape. Ooh, lots of stuff. Well, this is interesting. June 30th, 1990. 29,456 miles oil change. 1991, 34,000 oil change. Another oil change in 91. 92, 38,000 miles. New grease seals, repack front wheel bearings. 1993, new back brake, June 2000, December 28th, 2000, grease job, oil change, filter, mobile one, 65,360 miles. That's when it was parked, right there. That's pretty cool. Buick book, another original Buick book. Owner's manual. I bought it. Shear Motors was the dealer. Had 144 miles. Grayling, Michigan is when they brought this in. That is really cool. The old anti bouncillators is shot on the hood here for the power barn. So I got a hood proper later 600 right here. Not a 700. There we go. Well, let's take a look. Closer look under the hood here. I mean, it looks very, very original. The only thing that I'm seeing that's been monkeyed with is the lightning hoses, you know, this coupler here. Other than that, I think it's pretty much the way it was, which is great. It hasn't been modified or had a turbo upgrade. Or, not that that's bad, but I just, personally, this to me is more exciting. Boy. I wonder if this thing is going to actually rotate. Brake juice is low or empty. Look at this. Still in good shape. Mice didn't get into this, thankfully. Well, the paperwork in the mitten box there made a guy curious enough. I went ahead and did the old car foxes on this thing. They're getting expensive. I thought they used to be like 10 bucks. Anyway, this is really cool. I'm the third owner. You can see the car came into Michigan. It was delivered to an owner in Roscommon, Michigan. It was sold to the second owner in Roscommon, Michigan, who is who I got it from. So this car has never left Michigan. In fact, coming to this shop is the farthest south it has ever been in its entire life. And putting the pieces together now, we know for a fact it was parked December, January 2000-ish, somewhere in there. They probably put one more sticker on the plate after that because registration runs out. And that's it. It's been sitting since. Well, you know the usual. The plan is, I don't have one. And to throw a wrench into the ceiling fan, this thing has got beep boops and digicals and injectors and relays and doodabs and whatnots. But we've still got to work through the same process, right? So step one, does the engine still rotate 20 plus years sitting on concrete, it's been through winters and summers and thawing and freezing, moisture can creep, obviously, with the amount of flake we saw in the frame and exhaust, that's, something was happening, right? So if the engine rotates, then we gotta work digital fuel pump. Are we getting fuel pressure? Do we got sparkles? I think overall, I wanna make this thing run first, then we'll worry about you know the transmission 
and the brakes, which we already know don't work. Put all that together, hopefully it means we're driving this in a couple days. You know, with turbo cars, you have to use a very specific battery. Nope. This one just has a go handle on her. Now normally I get a wrench down there on the crankshaft and slowly rotate the engine, try to get 360 degrees out of it. So we don't cause any damage essentially. But these are tricky because there's a little fan that comes right off the crank that's for the intercooler. So I can't get anything in there. So unfortunately, just like when we picked up the Grand National, we're just gonna have to stab a battery on this and hit the key and pray that we don't blow the starter through the flex plate or bend any valve train or anything like that. That would not, repeat, not be good. Fire test? I heard a click. I'm gonna wait just a second, make sure the old whiffer ain't sniffling on any rubber wires or smokes, whatnot. You know, we've only burned down like 114 cars. So this is, let's just take our time and make sure nothing, where's the beep boop computers in this thing? I don't even know. This is gonna be something else. All right, I think we're good. Well, let's jump in and see if anything fires up. We got a dome light there. Oh yeah, we got dome lights back here. Okay. Key on, shouldn't hear the fuel pump. Yep. Okay, that is surprising. Fuel pump just ran. We got something going on. 26 liters. Zero kilometers. Zero kilometers. Why? Why is that? How come it's not in the gallons and the miles? Can you change that somehow? I don't. Okay. Twist, turn. There we go. Six gallons. I just twisted the trip thing. Six gallons of fuel, it says. Oh, okay. All right. Our seat works. No window. That window works. Okay, so does the engine rotate? I don't necessarily want this to run because of the fuel situation in the tank, but I just want to see if it spins. Yep. Nice. Well, hey, we're off to a great start. No electrical fires. Gauges seem to be gauge latent. The fuel pump even kicked on. Maybe that's operating, but we've got a whole thing to address back there with that. Right now, I'm gonna switch gears quick. Like I said, I'm gonna wash this thing down. We're gonna see what's under all this dust and dirt. I don't know how to do the shiny car thing, okay? But what I do know is we're gonna be climbing in and out of this thing and all over it for a couple days here, maybe 17 weeks, not sure. I don't wanna be scratching the paint by rubbing all this dirt and dust into it. I'm gonna grab this hose, conveniently hanging right there, scrub this thing down. Well, guys got her all washed up here and boy, she's shining bright like a diamond like that right hand lady says. There is a lot of work yet to be done though. It looks, I don't know, it looks great, but well, it is great. But I'm, what I'm trying to tell you here now is there's scratches and dings and dents. It's not perfect. There's a long scratch here all the way down the quarter panel. It's been some like uh, homemade automotive paint corrections, we'll call them. And then we can start to see that the bottom of the doors are actually rusting on both sides. Even though it had this anti-rust rock chip guard 12,000 on there, it got to it. But listen, beggars can't be losers. This thing it is amazing. I'm very, very happy with how it looks. Goodness gracious. 
Well, being all systems on this thing is gonna have to be touched. We're just gonna start digging into this thing and thrashing. I wanna start with fuel, and that's gonna involve jacking this car up and getting it on jack stands. Well, at that point, I mozzle run these wheels down and get new tires put on. It's the weekend, it's Saturday afternoon. There are some places around here, but I gotta be smart with this because a lot of them are closed tomorrow. So get this up on jack stands, bust these wheels off. I gotta go drop them off to get new tires put on. I'm probably gonna put the same exact thing. We gotta have white letters, obviously. <laughs> I don't know if there is anything louder than a jack rolling on concrete. That's, uh, that's just the way she goes, you know. Yeah. Gotta be honest, it feels weird not laying in a field right now. Down that far? I guess. Second notch. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What are you telling me? Okay. Got the captain's side front tire off here. A couple things. It did have brake rotors, bearings, dust cap. Looks like brand new uh, pads put in here before it was parked. Bad news is, well, look at them now. Also, this is very much not good. That is where all of the brake fluid is going. This not good. Very much not good. That goes into a junction block that no one can see, even if you have four eyes. So I don't I don't yeah. That's this is not good. But we're gonna stick to the plan. Either end or I need good rubber on these wheels. So I'm going to continue knocking these off Probably going to see the same exact thing on the other side I would imagine and probably even the line that goes to the rear is also going to be Pretty rotten because that's sitting up in this scaly frame Basically more of the same over here rotted line coming into the soft line here And yeah, so this this is already turning into a huge project. I do not have any of those hard lines. If we were to even try to repair this, I'm gonna to have to make something myself. Hip pass! Hip. Get in there, yeah, yes. Missing a center cap on this one. Yeah! Ah, sure. Hip, yeah. So the fuel tank back here has definitely got to come out. I, when was that, a year ago? Maybe more. We picked up a Grand National in a barn that had been sitting about the same amount of time, and the tank was an absolute mess. Uh, I spent a half a day, maybe more. I dropped it, I tried to clean it. We put a bunch of chemicals in it and marbles, and it was a whole nightmare. And then we fought the fuel pump as well. So I'm not even gonna attempt to do that on this one. Especially since I think this one's probably going to be worse. There were definitely some severe moisture issues With how this car was parked or where it was So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this tank. I did hear the pump start, but we might even just replace that now as well Mazel we got it down. I brought a tank and a pump with me this time So hopefully that's not going to be an issue. I got two straps 
I gotta get down and the bolts are hidden up, sandwiched underneath that muffler, if I remember right. So that's really, that's really great. And maybe it did only get one rear brake. There's old timer's handwriting, just says left. I don't think the other one was Craigslist rebuilt like that. So why would you do one side? Not sure. Frame tag still on it. For some reason, the shocks look brand new still. <laughs> in comparison to everything else but anyway i'm going to knock these two straps out try to lower this tank it's only got six gallons in it according to the digital so it hopefully doesn't crush my rib cage Well, the tank is finally out. That was a battle royale, and I ain't kidding you. Now, we're gonna have to do something with hardware and straps, and I had to cut and bend, and things are broken. Anyway, I popped this out just so we could take a look, and I know it's hard for you guys to see this, but it is absolutely just full of rust and varnish and crud. So that was a good call. New tank. Not so, not so newish there. New tank there. Not so much over here. So now that I've got it out, let's go see if the one I brought is right. <laughs> nope, probably not. Well, we might win one for once. I think it's gonna be correct. This one, the OE one, has a plastic basket in it, and this basket is metal on this one. Um, and basically what that's for is the pump sits in this basket. So if you have G-forces, you know, mullet braking acceleration, i.e., or turning, braking, whatever, it keeps fuel in this basket so the pump doesn't starve. And they make these without baskets as well for, like, the base Regal. If you got the 305 or whatever. This one came with the rings and everything like that. I think I have a pump somewhere. We're gonna go ahead and put that in. I'm gonna take that one apart and throw that pump in the trunk, just in case. Actually, I might just throw the whole, you know, the whole rig in like that. And then we got an extra. I think I even got a new gas cap because I didn't know if this one even had one on it. So I'm gonna reassemble the tank here. Then I gotta come over here, we're gonna clean up the trunk floor. Probably spritz in some powder coat. Tss, 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 tss. Because we're there, mazel. You know what I mean? And then, oh, I gotta find tank straps. I might've got some of those, we'll have to figure out hardware because all the bolts and the speed nuts are ruined now. So I'm gonna get in here while I can and just take a wire brush. I don't have, I don't have any like, you know, cheek poker 9000s or nothing for any of the tools. I'm going to wire brush the frame, the underside of the trunk, and we're going to spritz all this up and get some paint back on it. Try to slow this down. Whatever it is. The floors are just immaculate in this thing and let's save on it. The rubber lines are good. You can see by the clamps. It's had a fuel pump before at some point, but these straps are shot. Uh, this one is cut and bent. I got a hardware issue over there. So we're going to take these out. It's just this little bolt that goes through the strap here, on both sides. And we're going to replace those at the same time, too. Oh boy. Oh yeah. This is going to take a while. I'm full. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna make you stop. But I don't want to hurt you. Oh 
boy. Well, see you guys in seven months, basically. <laughs> rattle can, rattle can restoration. I'm gonna have to do this again with some very potent, high quality rust killer. But we're just doing what we can while we can. Oh yeah, this is bad now. D1635s, that's all you need to know. Good for chassis paint, frame paint, firewalls, you name it. See, brand new, lost the receipts. Well, the guy's got all the rust scraped, hammered, banged, wire brushed, cheek poked off the frame, got that, you know, put some color on. Got the bottom of the trunk cleaned up in the spare tire tub of Rooney. Also got the new tank assembled with the new pump, seal, and ring. So we should be able to put the gas tank straps back in and get this gas tank put back into the car. I'm probably gonna support it with the jack because then I gotta figure out some hardware. Again, I cut some bolts and straps, you know. You, you know, you've seen the show, right? And then uh, we should have new fuel tank and pump. Well, the guy had to run down to the hardware store and get some various lengths of stainless bolts here. One of the main reasons we moved this car down here is there were no facilities where this was stored up. And these are the metricals, unfortunately, but I wanted the flange head so I don't have to monkey around with washers and whatnot. And I got one side in using the existing uh, tank insulator or strap with the, or the rubber part, and then a new strap, which were kind of a fight to get in there and get bent initially. Got one in, got to get the other one done over there, and then the tank is done. Hey, remember how this winder didn't work? We gave her a wash that said thank you. All right, shh, listen now. I turn the key, we should hear the fuel pump. Fuel pumpage. Yep. I'm gonna wait to put gasoline in because I don't necessarily want to build fuel pressure up here yet. We need to flush the line. I don't want to send all the bad fuel that's in the line into the injectors because that's a whole nother trail of unicorns or whatever whatever the saying is. We got to test sparks still, do some other things, but the relay is working, the ignition is working. We've rolled the engine today. We've got a fuel tank, new fuel pump. We've checked all the fuel lines. We know we need brakes. That's pretty much where we're at. But it's been a very, very long day. I'm gonna get some rest. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We're gonna see if we can get this thing running. No, that probably won't happen, but anyway. I will disconnect this so we don't burn down this nice shop. Whoa, whoa, we got a fan for some reason. She's raring to go. Here I am, I'm back. Okay, we gotta get this thing running today. And after that, we've gotta at least get started on the brakes. That's gonna be a domino effect of just ripping out crusty juice pipes, basically. Now, if we do get this thing running, we gotta run it long enough to test the cooling system, the head gaskets, all of the gaskets. There's sensors and doodabs and whatnots that need to do things for the computers. So there's a lot of stuff there. Yesterday, I got the fuel tank, fuel pump in, cleaned up a bunch of stuff. Got some fresh tires and rubber back here mounted, ready to go for when we do get the brakes done, but we're gonna leave it like this for now. Gotta jump in to spark this morning, and then we're gonna make sure we have fuel pressure at the fuel rails, and we gotta flush that. But first, we gotta check some fluids before we keep spinning this thing over. The earth juice stick is over here. Uh, maybe a quart low, give or take. Still got plenty of viscosity. 
I don't smell any fuel, coolant, anything like that. And based on the old timer's notes, I think he changed the oil and immediately put it in here. Now oil doesn't go bad from just sitting unless it gets contaminated. Now we will change this just to be safe, especially get this filter off of here. But we can fire it up on this and run it on this for a little bit anyway. It's really not that bad. Shift machine, can see what the blood stick. Oh, lots of blood, bright, bright red. I don't think we're gonna have any issues there at all. That looks really good. And again, it really did had to have run and drove, driven, and drived. It was, it was driven. The car moved under its own power into the storage shed because it was backed in. So I don't think the shift machine is going to be an issue for us. So I think what I'm going to do here is put a sparkle tester in line and then we can crank on this thing and see if we got spark. There's a big brain box with lightning hoses and stuff hanging out of it. Hopefully we don't have to get into all of that. Well, I'm running on some very limited tools here, fellers and fellas. I dug and dug and crawled under and was going to put the Lone Wolf 6000 in here. So I could crank it over out here, but I don't even got that. So I'm going to put this in line instead. And this is going to be hanging down here. And you guys are going to watch this for me. I'm going to crank the engine over. We want to see this light bulb flashing. If it is, that means we in fact have lightning. We're not going to have to worry about any of the ignition stuff. Well, hopefully. Okay, we are in the park it ups. No wheels hang and roll, I guess. So I'm going to crank on this thing. You watch that light bulb now, and that's, we got to communicate what's going on. Hear the fuel pump still, that's good. Well, it just fired, and it's not, how is that? Okay. Well, had fuel in the fuel rail. I guess we're going to have a runner here. That is awesome. I was not expecting that. What in the devil is going on? How is it pressurizing anything? I done drained the line out. <laughs> yeah, safe to say, you know, she's got sparkles. I am just so relieved right now. We're not out of the sticks into the woods yet, though. We're out of the, out of the woods into the ice rink. There's a lot of stuff, even if it fires, is it gonna to continue to run? Is it the throttle position sensor doing throttle position sensor thing? Is there's an IAC and a MAF and a other things in there. So, let's just, let's put the oars down and quit rowing for a minute. I think let's go ahead and switch gears and change the oil. Pretty confident it's gonna try to run and idle. And then after that, I don't, I don't know. I never make a plan. Okay. Well, according to the notes that were left, this should be brand new. Oh, wow. Quaker State Oil. Gee whiz. I also got to thinking about the notes. Based on the year and the miles, the second owner bought this, drove it 30 miles, and put it into a storage unit. And that is it. Because the car foxes showed the date of the purchase of the second person, and it didn't align with the notes from the, from the old timer. So that's pretty interesting. Just stuck it away. Listen to this. It's going to sound weird, but in my hands, is fresh gas. Not only that, it's 93 octane. <laughs> I don't, I'm not used to this. Gotta use the premium fuels for the Turbski. Can't wait to see how much, you know, boosticles this thing really has. What I'm saying is I got more money in gasoline than socks right now. I'm gonna put 10 gallons in here. You can see I've already lost about eight on the ground. That way we can run this thing long enough to make sure the thermostat's opening and the cooling fan that's digital, that's kicking on. I believe it has a low and a high, but we still need to flush the fuel rail. Should only take a couple minutes once I figure out the 
the digital wiring on it. Okay, in the car's Atari box thing is programmed a one second fuel prime when you turn the key forward. We're gonna need a lot more than that because we need to flush the fuel rails here. Underneath this cap is a Schrader valve. Right there. So once it builds fuel pressure, what we're gonna do is just depress this. See that gas that just leaked out? And we're gonna get all of the old varnished fuel and hopefully any debris that's in this line because the last thing we wanna have happen is an injector get hung open or get hung closed. Severely rich or severely lean, it's gonna cause engine damage. We wanna avoid that at all costs. So we need to hot wire the fuel pump. We could just jump it in the back, but we could also do it right here. We've got boost reference. First relay is gonna be the fuel pump relay. Then you got the AC kick off thing and then boop bop, beep boop, computer box. So I gotta get the digital meter out, find which one is hot. I think it's a black and striped one and then jump it to, I believe gray. And that's gonna fire up the pump. And then we can just depress this until we start smelling and tasting fresh fuel. And then we'll let it build pressure up and pop 16 holes in the fuel line. And then we could start replacing that. Power tool. Let's see. I think it's gray anyway. I'm going off of memory from the Grand National and also uh, the three colors we had back at the pump were purple, gray, and black. And being I'm not seeing a purple here, that would leave me to believe by deduction, deducilizationals, that it must be the gray one. Going hot on the battery. Turn the key. See what we got. One of those will be hot for just, I think it's a green one, hot for a split second, but we want the one that's showing 12 volt key, and we'll just jump it over. I'm going with this. Where does the black striped one? Over here, yes, this one, this one, what does this one say, there it is. Okay, I think I'm ready to test this. I can't get two gator clips in this, so I'm just going to run power straight from the battery for the one. Hopefully this is in there, it's really gooey and got that dielectrical greases in there and stuff. Um, but it should still work. We're just throwing 12 volts to it. So listen up here and we should hear fuel pressure. Nothing. Perfect. Wait. Oh. There we go. Pump is running. It's going to be tight Keep or hard keeping this on there. I'm gonna get this rigged up. Once I get it stuck in there, we'll inspect for fuel leaks, make sure it's returning, and then uh, get this valve open quick so we can flush it. Okay, I'm gonna hold this. Fuel pump on. Lots of pressure. That's pretty good, enough to start a fire. Now I'm gonna let it run, and it's gonna be circulizing, doing the fuel managemental things, and then sending the rest back to the tank. So I'm gonna let it build pressure now and see how many holes it blows in the steel line that's laying in the rotted fuel rail. Back under the car here, you can hear the pump running and you can hear it returning. And the great news is, I don't see any puddles of gasoline on the ground. So that's great. 
Well, it's a moment of lies, basically. We've got fuel tank, fuel pump, fuel pressure, fuel cleaning-ish. We know we got sparkle, oil, oil filter. Battery. Let's crank this thing, see if it runs. Two decades sitting in a storage unit. Yes! Yeah. No valve train noise. Oh, little power steering. That is just incredible. No valve train noise. We, I'm sure we built oil pressure cranking on it, but need power steering fluid. Wow. Getting a little smoky in here. All those years the grind starting to wear off. The computer's trying to figure out the air fuel right now. steering is not happy. No lights. Unfortunately, we do have a fuel leak. It's running off the side of the tank and coming down here. I believe it's the steel line on the return side right by the tank because it was kind of hanging down right there. And I bet all the monkeying around putting this up and down a few times uh, just took that line out. So I get to drop the tank again. That's pretty cool. Also very cool, the car is running. 22 years sitting. A little rough, but it's gonna come back around. Also, that might be the charger whirler making that, not this. This is definitely pumping, and it is full. Turning the old go left, go right selector. Beep, beep. Uh, does not change that tone, only Ripham's does. One last thing I'm gonna do before I turn it off and drop the tank for the ninth time. Ha! Shift machine shifted. There's that gasoline. Well, that's good. That gives me a little more hope. Yeah, it's leaking up in there. So it probably just got rotted in that rubber boot. So we're gonna have to shorten some of these up and add some more line. It looks like the return but I'll have to take that apart and take a look at it here. Yep, yeah. that's that return line. Got a geyser. That's not too bad of a fix though. And yeah, while I'm in here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace the uh, feed line and probably even the vent line. I was trying to save 30 bucks, here I am. Had to buy the parts anyway, and then I got $7.19 in labor laying under here. Let's get it done. So this is the guy right here that caused the issue. Dirt and whatever gets in here and rusted that line. Not putting it in for that very reason. Got the old lines out, got them replaced. Actually use these high pressure hose clamps. They're expensive, but I guess they work. I don't know. So anywho, I tested it while I was on the floor here, seemed to be doing fine. And then uh, I got it running right now as well uh, with the tank up, just to make sure if the pipes got bent or something again. We didn't have a leak, I got a light shining up there. Gonna wait just a couple minutes, make sure there's no leaks. Now I'll get that other strap up, tighten it up, 
and then we could fire this thing up again and let it run a little bit longer. All right, we'll give her some more time to idle. See if we can warm it up. Make sure the cooling fan kicks on correctly. I'm actually gonna let it run in gear. Let the transmission pump. Let the rear end get some oil splashed into it, get the bearings lubricated up. I'm gonna try to get a head start on the brakes here. We're probably gonna have to turn these old drums here. Oh yeah. Turning drums. Rebuilding. See? Bringing them right back around. And then we just add some drum resurfacing material here. Brand new. Cooling fan did just kick on getting a little nervous there I went to pop the cap off and she bit me it's pretty hot wasn't expecting it to warm up so quick but cooling fan is on low right now those relays are here uh, if we need to get to them in the future turned on the AC compressor is not kicking in so she's low on the ice cube juice I would assume not quite sure uh, just got finished rebuilding the drums back there and kind of just been hanging out Watching the uh, gauges here, make sure nothing kicks on. Running 13 miles an hour. We should reset this trip. Well, we'll do it when we leave because I'm going to have to disconnect the battery again. How do you. I don't even know how to run this. Well, that's going to work. Sounds like. I'm running uh, two cans of berm down the tank here. Can't really put it down the app on this rig. And this is gonna help clean up the valves, the injectors, big thing, uh, the combustion chamber, all that, and the sparkulators, which I have not changed. Whatever's in there is in there. But listen, she only needs what she needs, fellas. Okay, let's not go crazy. Got one more cam, we're going a little heavy. Hopes I can chew on it. Also, I got this thing idled up. I hooked into the computer and turn the idle up. And by that I mean I just jammed a paint can lid into the throttle body. That's fine. There's no temp gauge, but we can keep an eye on her. It's doing good. It's doing real good. The exhaust on these is hot. Intake air temperature, this is pretty wild. 100 degrees, nice and cool. I mean, relatively speaking, right? Got the, this fan blowing, just get some fresh air in here too. Fans on, it's doing good. Well, the Buick Regal T-Type runs. Runs pretty good, I let it, you know, on the computerized high idle for, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Brought it back down to idle. It's already starting to smooth out. Just gotta run these things. They're not built to sit, you know what I mean? The transmissions turned the axle. In theory, this would drive. However, I know for a fact, based on the pedal laying on the floor, it will not stop. Now, now I don't even really wanna talk about it, but in here is this master cylinder, electronic motor, ball pressure unit thing unobtainium. Cannot, good luck if you're in the market for one. <laughs> Put it that way. Now, I do have a just a sliver of hope. The reason that master cylinder is down and the pedal is to the floor is the lines are rotted. Now, I know there's one up front already rotted. That means there's going to be lines in the back rotted. The lines to the back is probably going to be rotted. So, yep, we're going to be making brake lines. 
pretty sure. Which means I'll be driving all over the place looking for fins. But anyway, we're gonna start in the front. I started putting everything in the shop a cart for the parts and pieces and doodads. It was getting expensive. So then, aha, went on the Jungle website and I found a high performance ultra fast car kit. All in a box, basically. It's these very poorly done slotted rotors, which you need when you come into the tavern at 20. You gotta have performance things. Some crudely spray painted stock calipers. And it came with these carbon fee based ceramic pads. I don't know, the kit was cheaper, okay? Got some soft lines. I've got wheel bearings. I went full AC Delco, put the seven bucks down. We got wheel seals. So I think I got everything to do the front. That's where I'm gonna start. If we can repair that one front brake line, maybe cross our fingers, say we're good up here and start moving our way to the back. About supper time. So we gotta get, you know what I mean? I'm gonna start on the uh, captain side, I think. Now, if you're on a super tight budget, we probably could have these turned, put a rebuild kit in these, and maybe even reuse the pads. But I like this car. It's only going to go up in value. I kind of just want this to be halfway gooder. And we know we can put a little bit of money into this car, and it's not going to hurt us too bad, even though the upper control arm is just falling into... Anyway, ignore that, it's fine. So we're gonna pull these pins out. This line is completely rotted right there. We know it's not gonna work. So I can just basically break this side off over here. Well, there you can see the fresh liquid. So all that's gonna to have to get replaced pretty much. So I'm just gonna start digging in. Fought and fought and a guy got the fitting out. This goes to the proportioning valve. This goes on the frame side there. And you can see the pipe's got a little leak in here. So we're gonna make a new one. We're gonna use the, this is what you guys, we use up north here in the Midwest or the Northern States. It's a copper nickel alloy basically, or just think of it like copper coated steel. It helps resist all the salt and everything else that just eats these lines up like nothing. And then this end will go into a new soft line. And then of course that's gonna hook into the caliper, which hopefully has a caliper bolt. It does not. Wow. That's that's okay. Well, then I gotta try to get the caliper bolt out of the old ones, and those were stuck. I had to use a lot of heat just to get the sliding pins out. Now I gotta try to get that out. They're probably gonna get ruined. I came in here and wire well i was gonna call it wire reeling arm elbow cheek poking wheel wheelering i just i clean it up a little bit okay is what i'm saying it ain't perfect i put a little bit of that rust stop on it just so we can get home i just just didn't want to look at it just crumbling apart i got 15 pounds of rust and dirt and everything out of here uh so gonna get that line in then we can start reassembly on the hub get the bearings in um, it's got these plastic tankums and they're really worn. So I'm actually glad I got in here and the cutter key wasn't even bent over or nothing. And the nut was too loose, hub was too loose. So whoever did this brake job, I don't know if they got in a hurry or something or who knows how many years ago that was. Could have been in the nineties when that card said most of the work was done on the car, but we'll get her patched up with this, uh, you know, the fried rice kit I got here. And then it should just, it's going to stop so hard, it's going to flip this thing over forward. No, it's not going to, definitely won't do that. Okay, we successfully have juice pipes. Well, at least on this one corner. We've got three more to do. But time to get the hub on there. I'm going to pull the old chair up to the desk here. And uh, knock these out quick. Get these packed, ready to go. I got this on because I'm going to do it by hand. 
Um, I just noticed the this style tankum, tankum, tank, tank, tankles uh, was the bearing I pulled out. Maybe it was the original bearing. These are AC Delcos. Hard to say. So let me get these greased up. This guy goes on here. I was able to get the bolt out of the other one, thankfully. So we should be set. These pins, if those were missing, we would have been in trouble too. They were rotted and stuck in the old calipers. Well, I needed uh, something to pound the seal in. You can use a big socket and stuff like that, but I don't have any of that. Or they make, you know, seal press tools or whatever. I got this one in. I found the Vice Grip Garage clear coat catalyst. This goes to the wipe on clear coat stuff. It was laying on the bench. I just did another vehicle with this in the shop, actually, a few days before we started the Buick Regal. And it just happens to fit absolutely perfectly. And dead blow, knocks that seal in. So these will be all ready to go. So the other side hopefully will go a little bit faster. You know, that's Corvette brakes, the Z017, the new one. Yeah, and that's how you know it's good, right there. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other side really quick, rinse and repeat. I don't know, might have to do another line, hopefully not. And then we can get to the rears, which unfortunately has just been sitting back here dripping oil. And I don't know why. I haven't even touched the pedal. Well, the dinner plate brakes are officially done on both sides. Off to the rear here, and the dog bowl brakes in the back. This drum is shot. And also the wheel cylinders. Well, although the shoes look pretty good and the hardware was definitely replaced at some point, the wheel cylinders are gonna be shot. Juice pipes are already out. Those just snapped into 47,000 pieces. There was virtually nothing left. So I'm gonna to try to delicately take this all apart. I've got some wheel cylinders. We'll put those in, try to reuse everything else. If not, I did pick up a hardware pack just in case, but there's plenty enough life on these to go ahead and reuse that. And then I got some new drums. We'll put those on, which is a shame because I just got done turning these. That's right. I could turn them in for a core, put some new ones on. 37.9 months later, got one wheel cylinder out, and you can see they are, in fact, just absolutely hammered. Now, GM was trying to make these easier to put in, I think, because normally there's two little small bolts. Goes through the back, and they always got rusted, and, you know, they were hard to get out. When I moved to this clips thing that just kind of presses over this and then snaps in, and believe you me, I fought. Well, look. I fought, and fought, and fought, and fought, and fought to get this thing out of here. So that's, that's pretty neat. Jam this one back in. I guess you just press these in from the back side. Away we go. Okay, brakes are done on both sides and the rear as well. Basically wheel cylinder and drum left all the other stuff alone. We can return that, save a little bit of money. Now I gotta make some lines in the rear as well. Still getting used to the shiny car thing. I'm not used to, you know, paint protection. Sure. Any hoose. Gotta make some lines. There's a rubber soft line in the center of the axle we gotta get to. Gonna use a 
long steel nut on the wheel cylinder side so the wrench fits it better because it's going to protrude a little bit more. And then I'll use a, a short one on the actual T or distribution line that hangs over the center of the diff there. And after these two lines are in, we can add some juice and finally see the dreaded question. The biggest thing that I'm worried about is all of this stuff right here not doing the stuff. That would not be, we were there, we've been there before. It would not be good. Whoa, what the devil is that about? One dry. Front and rear, be a good time to clean out that stuff. Looks like that's mounted slightly crooked or it's sitting crooked. Anyway, we ain't got no ideas in that. So what a guy's gonna do here is go ahead and put a fitting on this end of the line here. I'm gonna run that into the wheel cylinder on the drinker side, and then we'll bend the line and flex will make it all the way over to the distribution block. Gonna take the old marker that a guy always has to carry in the front pocket, mark it, take it back out, cut it, put that fitting on. No, I take it back. We're gonna flare it. Then realize we didn't put the fitting on. Then we're gonna cut it again then put the fitting on and then stretch it tighter. <laughs> Plan. So once I get this, you know, it doesn't have to be super tight, but at least started, I'll do some initial bends and make sure that it's going to get into my bracketry. And then I'll tighten it on this end to hold it. And I'm going to go on the other side, bend it over to that distribution line, which comes down, and then mark it. And that's where we'll cut it. There's no rust under here at all. I just, I can't, I can't believe it, you know. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. We just got to get home right now. Well, just finished up the rear brakes. Started trying to bleed these. Hey, yep, you called it. The one line I tried to not replace in the entire brake system has popped and it's squirting juice all over. So now I gotta get this replaced or patched and that's probably the most difficult because it runs over the frame, under the cross member, over to the distribution block. And if you remember the fight I had getting the fitting out of the distribution block for the other line, we're either going to embark on that again or I can maybe cut this somewhere underneath the cross member and patch it in, but I don't have fittings, so I'd have to go get some more fittings for that. I'd need uh, three I got two new ones and this rounded off rest of one that's not going to work. So that's where we're currently at. For these bends here, I just take a socket, put it on the fitting, and just roll the tube right over it. And that way it doesn't kink it up. So that right there, the fitting undone is the one I'm after. You know, heat and words were set. Let's just put it that way. It runs underneath the cross member. And then all the way over, up over the frame, outside of the frame, over into the soft line over there. Now, I'm running out of time, let's be honest. We don't even know if the master cylinder works yet. So I'm just going to kind of run this line loosely, probably zip tie it up, just enough to get us home. And then when we can get it up on a lift, or at least, you know, in our own garage, we can start tearing into that a little bit better. And, Make it nice for now. We just need juice to go from there to there. Oh, something blew up. Well, I've got the line plugged in over there, run underneath. Finally got it up over this. I cut it a little, a little too long. Had to fight on her a little bit, but. We're getting there. This is where I was just absolutely spraying out and I thought I was going to do that and I wire wheeled it and hooked my eyeballs in it. We had to be really careful. This fitting doesn't spin. I had to put a vice grip on this side and spin off the rubber line. But we're almost there. So now I just need to cut this, take this out, put a cut this here, put a fitting on where I left a mark, plug that in and then try once again. The next thing that could hold us down, the only line at this point now that isn't replaced, is the main line from that distribution block all the way to the back and that short rubber line. Those two can just hang on. 
for us. We might get this whipped. Got the Cooper Cobras going on. They're looking good. Of course, I had to shine them up. And we can see the General Sow Caliper kind of peeking through the back there. Looks pretty good, actually. Not bad. I got uh, one missing center cap completely and one that's missing the decal. The tire shop busted the wheel on one of these. And uh, the center cap won't stick on anymore. This whole lip is fractured. So we're going to be looking at probably putting wheels on the car now because I can't have one new one and not have the others match, of course, in this one here. They just really cranked around the balance machine and split all of that off, unfortunately. But it happens. It's an old wheel. You know what I mean? Almost got her back on the ground here. Looking forward to it. Well, a guy has his going to town outfit on because, well, had to get in the car, didn't want to get it dirty. <laughs> That's a really weird saying on this channel. And yeah, you look behind me, the Buick Regal is outside. It has moved under its own power for the first time in 22 years, and the brakes actually stopped the car. We didn't hit the pine trees. That's pretty cool. Got the new tires on there. Of course, had to go with the Coupe Cabras. White letter out. 235, 60, 15, just a scoosh wider than what was on there before. Basically all that's left is I've got to clean up my mess here and it's a great time to say thank you to Jeff and Sandin for the hospitality and help. It's been absolutely amazing working in this beautiful shop. We've got to get ready for a long drive home. It's also a great time to say thank you to all of you that are still watching. I value your continued support so much. I sincerely appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, look, it's easy. It's free, you just click the button, that's all you gotta do. And then you don't miss future road trips and fun stuff that we do around here. Let me clean up, I gotta load the car, throw some tools in the trunk. We don't have a lot. We got a Hobo Freight toolkit, a couple fluids, things like that. I got a few couple sensors and doodabs. That's my biggest worry, woe, and stress right now is if any of the digicals or the electricals or the sensors or the doodabs go bad on the way home, we're in, we're in for it. It's gonna be something else. Well, here we go. We're just gonna jam around the highway. Shift, second gear, speedometer works. Third gear, we got all the gears. We got all the gears. I got to keep the windows rolled up in here because I don't want to make the headliner worse. I got sweat coming out of my eyelids, my forearms, places I didn't even know I had. It's not good. It's shifting great. I got an overdrive right now. A little bumpy, but we are in Michigan. <laughs> I'm actually worried about this car just shaking to death. The roads up here are... What are you guys doing in Michigan? I, the roads are, I don't even understand. I can't put into a value how bad the roads are. It's beautiful though. First stop, hardware store. We gotta get some Mega Mips. Hold this up. I got enough gas to get us down the road a ways. First stop's always the scariest. We gotta let this thing warm up on the highway. Hopefully everything does its things and the computer does the computer stuff. We don't have an extra ECU or PCM or ECM or GCM or HAM or body control module mounts or any of that stuff. We got a Leatherman and some dreams. Hardware store, here we come. Well, drove south quite a ways, found us a hardware store. Car's doing great. Still running a little rough, uh, but I suspect it's going to come around hopefully as we're driving it. And remember, we haven't changed sparkulators. I do have some in the trunk. If it doesn't improve halfway, three quarters of the way home, we might accessorize on that a little bit. But I do got some barrymen in there. We'll see what happens there. Cruise control kind of works. Not really though. I was doing 60, turned it on, and this thing fed all the coal immediately. Went wide open. She hits harder than Tyson back in the day. I'll show you a little later. I just want to want to bring her around first before we start throwing all the boostuses at it. Okay, I'm going to go get some Megamint and 
and also see if they have any AC recharge here. And a phone cord and probably some licorice. Well, since this headliner material is in such good shape, I really need to restore this back to factory spec. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and start that process. It's gonna take a while, but we just wanna get it done right. Restoring headliner. Yeah, that's probably gonna work. I don't know what you're thinking here, but I can't even tell at this point that it was repaired. So I think that's pretty much done. We can't have that flapping around in our teeth. Now, moving on to the ACs. We're gonna try this. What I'm hoping is that there's not any leaks in the system, but it just lost enough pressure where the pressure switch kicked off, or on, I guess. It would be a normally open, so now it's closed. It shuts down the AC pump from pumping because it says they ain't got no pressure. You know what I mean? So we're gonna stab a can in there. I just realized I forgot my hood propylizer. See if I can find something, probably not. And we'll see if we can get some AC, because with the windows down, the headliner is just gonna get foam in my teeth. And I mean, we repaired it, don't get me wrong, but I don't, I don't know if that's gonna last, necessarily. Oh, got in a hurry, I forgot. This is an R12 system, this is not going to work. Well, I mean, it can. I'll explain that a little bit later. We're going to have to get to a parts store. We're going to have to put some conversion pieces on here in order for this fitting to work. They switched it when they went over to the old R-134A instead of the good old 12. Now, it does sound like there's pressure in here. See? So there's hope that the system isn't completely evacuated or leaked off. That's great, might, like I say, might just need a little huff of gas and it should be ready to rock. Found a, well, I found a part of a broken pallet over here. Kind of looks like a foot went through the edge of one, but nah, it was like that. Well, I searched along the route with the digital computer pocket box machine and it said there's an O'Reilly Auto Parts 25 miles or something that way. So let's do that. I am already, I am running out of shirts, is what I'm saying. It's hot! So let's go see if we can find those conversion thingies, see if we get this AC working, or I'm actually gonna have to legitimately do something with the headlight. No, <laughs> that's not happening. Yeah, don't, uh, don't worry about that, borrowing it. Well, crazy guy in a mullet just came by and completely recycled the old R12 out of it. It was quick, nice service. Anyway, I barely hit the button and yep, she's starting to cycle. So, compressor works, switch works. Now we just gotta add a little bit of juice. We'll see if we can get it to stay on and see if it actually runs cold. Well, I can't believe it. And you don't got to either, but we got air. It ain't ice cold, it's like cooler cold. But we gotta run down the road yet, get that compressor spinning. And we also gotta wait and see how long it's gonna hang around for us. But, as my uncle would say, woo! Or as the kids would say, let's stay! Or whatever, I don't know. Or maybe it's go, but I don't know where they're always going. Anyway, let's hit the road. First long jaunt here. Let's run this thing. Half tank of gas. Hopefully we don't have any issues. Hopefully the air stays around. Still ain't got no cruise control. Listen to me, I'm talking about cruise control and air conditioning. What is going on? This is not, not normal. Oh, we gotta try the T-tops at some point too. Let's 
some people think that ethanol fuel is relatively new, but did you know it powered a gasoline engine in 1826? And they started putting ethanol and uh, US fuel in the 1970s, actually. I'm uh, well over 200 miles into the trip. Everything's going good. I was just reading the owner's manual. Wanted to see what it said about ethanol fuel, and it says up to 10%. There's an automatic digital computer box course that'll decrease or detune the engine, allegedly. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe one of you that know, you can bleep loop it down there. Something like that. From what I've heard, and I know with my Grand National, can't really tell the difference between 89 and 93, for example. I don't know. It also mentions you can run up to 5% methanol. That's pretty cool. Car's doing good. It's running strong. Somehow, some way, the cruise control just all of a sudden started working. So I've been kind of playing with that a little bit. The power steering pump is on its way out. It's for sure the power steering pump. It is absolutely screaming at me right now. I might have to try to find some pump seal snake oil or something like that. Fuel mileage seems to be pretty good. I'm not gonna calculate it right now because I was farting around with it, running around through town and stuff. It's not really highway. Everything else seems to be great. Transmission's strong. It drives down the road straight. I don't have any shakes or vibrations yet. Just kind of been cruising and enjoying it. Uh, got about three hours of daylight left. We're going to keep running. I don't know if I'm going to drive through the night. Probably shut her down, you know, late, late summer is what I'm thinking. I don't want to be out with this thing if it breaks down on the side of the road and it needs sensors or something like that and there's not a parts store open. If it was, you know, an old carburetor, mechanical fuel pump, we'd make some of that out of sticks. You know, I can appreciate these mud flaps. They got some really good 80s styling. They even tried to match them. And let's be honest, they did their job. There's no rock chips and all that stuff down the side of the car. But now I'm fearful it's just gonna start collecting dirt and dust and stuff we're gonna be driving it and create rust. I think I'm gonna drop these mud flaps. I'm gonna take them off. Oh, what do you guys think about that? That's the AC, don't panic yet. AC is still hanging in there. But I think a guy could get a rear rover in there and get that off. Boy, that paint is pretty. It's got a pearl in it. Look at that. And a pinstripe of some kind. Wow. All right, I'm going to throw some groceries down the neck. Hit the road. Well, fellers and fellettes, we successfully put on hundreds and hundreds of miles today. I made it all the way to whoa, Kentucky, which is great. So tomorrow, I don't know how, we still got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles to still go. But the good news is the car is doing absolutely fantastic thus far. Tomorrow we're gonna have to check fluids and do the usual stuff. Make sure we got no leaks or anything like that going on. It seems to be staying cool. That was also another concern, but all I got is a dummy gauge, and I don't even know if that works. So I've been using the you know, whistle snippers, trying to make sure that, you know, stays in a good area. Fuel pump that we put in is doing good, even though that was kind of a cheap knockoff thing. So I don't know, I'm just gonna get some rest, and we'll hit it early in the morning. Hopefully we can make it the rest of the way to Southern Tennessee. Well, good morning. What a beautiful day, hot already. 97 million early, nine or eight, seven o'clock. Let's see if we can get this Buick home. I'm not even sure how many days in. 
at this point we are or what day it is if i'm being completely honest but it's daylight we can take a closer look at the rig Whew, boy that color is growing on me i don't see any oil puddles coolant puddles or transmission puddles that's good Uh-oh. Looks like we're going to be crawling around under this car yet. And I can tell just from the splatters on the back of this, we've got, we've got issues. We've got rear end issues. <laughs> yes! Here's your sign, as Mr. Foxworthy would say, that your pinion seal is shot oil everywhere so if we go ahead and lay under the car oh yeah there you go see that puddle there all the oil splattered back that's gear oil and the front of that case or the third member or the ax the drive the axle the pinion there's a seal in there that's shot we need that we absolutely need that to get home Basically, if we don't replace the seal, all of the rear end gear oil is going to escape, as you can see it's started to do at some point late last night. And at that point, the gears are gonna get extremely hot and also that same oil splashes the axle bearings. And we don't wanna cook our axle bearings or seals on the outside, because that's even more work. So we're gonna have to get this car in the air, which I don't have anything to do that. I got the factory jack and we're gonna have to find a seal for eight and a half I don't have an impact or any of that stuff basically I think I'm gonna nurse this over to O'Reilly's and see if we can come up with a plan to replace the seal in their parking lot also yes please a little gun shy this morning now with that rear seal going out that gives us the status of all the seals just trying to check the oil here I'm going to hold the hood with my head. It's the perfect time it's been sitting. Oh, it's on the money. Has not burned a drop of oil. That's great news. This contraption here is weeping. You can see we've lost some juice. So we've got great brakes still, but it's getting wet on the firewall and back in there. Now we can do, you can convert this to a standard brake, like the Regal has, but you gotta change the whole pedal assembly. Yes. Or you can go hydro-hydraulic brakes on these now even. Believe you me, it's a little bit trickier, but it can be done. Cold start, might have to pump it six times and pull the choke lever out. You know what I mean? No. No. Come on. There we go. Good morning. Boy, I'm almost out of gas. Runs a little rough when you first start a cold and then the computer figures it out. See right there, hear a change? Now she's got her dial. Should maybe take those mud flaps off today too. Air conditioning held overnight. I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna be miserably hot and sweaty here in a few minutes. It'd be nice to jump in here. This is pretty cool. Didn't realize this when we were looking at the car initially, but there's an oil change sticker in the window that said the next date it's due by is June of 2001 at 68,000 miles. So the Quaker State, the old timer wrote down, he didn't do the oil change, he had someone, someone put it in. Anyway, it's, I found an O'Reilly's, let's crawl over there. Ask if we could work in the parking lot and see if we can find some stuff. Okay, I believe this has an eight and a half rear. Got some goodies. It's a shop to save some money. Ended up going with ramps instead of getting a jack and jack stands and all of that. It's gonna be a little sketchy getting the pinion nut off. Guest on that size. Fine. Did have a seal puller, which is, we're gonna need that for the eight and a half. The seven and a half is really easy. You can use a screwdriver. Well, I'll show you a little bit later. But I think what I'm gonna do is just back the car up on the ramps here. 
and uh, we'll jump under and get the drive shaft out and hopefully this doesn't take too long. Fighting that seal out is going to be the thing. Getting it back in, I don't have a seal press or anything. Also, going to be a little dicey. You don't get them in right, they're going to leak just as bad if not more. <laughs> Great. Alright, nice and easy. But more. Easier. But we need more, but easy. Right there. Maybe just a tick forward. Right there. Now we can definitely see the issue. So we gotta get this drive shaft out of the way, and then we can start digging into this thing a little bit more. Okay, I got the drive shaft down, which is just laying on the ground right here. And I'm not pulling that out of the transmission because this orientation is gonna be very important because we can't rotate the tires, right? So everything's gotta go back together precisely for the U-joint to line up with this. So I've notched it with my Leatherman. That's gonna be my lineup mark for the rotational and the directionals. And uh, I should have, but I forgot to mark the nut to the actual shaft so we don't have to torque it because I'm not gonna buy a $45 torque wrench for this. Um, now I'll take my hammer and we're gonna try to knock this out gently. There it's starting to come. I'm gonna get a drain pan under here just in case there's any oil left, doubtful very. And then we can finally see the seal in there. Yeah, as you can see here, this seal is absolutely just destroyed. It was doing nothing. So now we gotta pop this out. This is a quick way to tell this is an eight and a half and not a seven and a half. Because see how the seal is inside of the case? That's an eight and a half. A seven and a half, the lip of the seal comes all the way out here. And you just take a screwdriver and work around it and you can pry that seal out. But now it's this one. I bought a seal puller, which is like a hook. I'm just gonna hook it in and yank it out. Oh, okay. I see the problem. See, this has got this little rounded edge to help you place it in there, but then you need to evenly drive this in. You can't just start whacking it with a hammer or anything like that. And it's also slightly recessed in so it wouldn't work anyway. You want to get it all the way in. You need a, a specific tool for this typically. So I did the right thing and bought this $4 piece of muffler extension and I'll be dipped if that doesn't line up good enough to get us home. So I'll be using that to pound. I am going to take some gear oil and lubricate this so that this doesn't get hot and burn up in the first 10 miles before it gets splashed with oil. And really shouldn't be any need to lubricate the outer ring. We'll want to see this red paint actually coming off as it presses in. That's a good indication that it's a tight seal around there. New seal is in. That worked really slick actually. And if you look close, you can see some of that red paint marking left are kind of flaked off. We've got a nice tight seal there. So now we just need to reassemble this thing, put it back together so we can get on the road. We've got, I think over 400 miles again today. Gonna ask this guy to blow my back off with his air compressor. I'm all dirty. Well, got her licked. Drove it around front and everything seems fine so far. But just keep an eye out or an ear out, I should say. A waller in and chatter in and banging. Used uh, limited slip gear oil. Very important, fellers and fillets. It is terribly hot. I just basically took a shower in the sink at O'Reilly's. These Vice Grip Garage shop shirts are really high quality red cap. They're almost impossible to sweat through because they're moisture wicking. And look at this. All the time. Just so good. Anyway, I'm gonna go get a cold water somewhere and let's hit the road. We gotta get some miles down. We got a late start now this morning. Well, just fueled up. Got some groceries. I guess we'll find the interstate and hopefully we don't have any more issues. We'll see though. 22 years this thing sat. It's likely, well, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it.
Well, the guy's getting close to home. I don't know, 30 miles, something like that. But I'm used to pulling in at 2, 3 in the morning. And I ain't kidding you. I even swung in, got the ears lowered a little bit. Grabbed something to wet my back neck. But anyway, I told you guys we get closer, we'd make some poles. So let's go ahead and see what this thing's got. I probably I think we got the cobweb blowed out of her. Got 58 million pounds in the trunk. <laughs> what could go wrong? I'm gonna turn the air off. It's got an AC shutdown relay, but all right, let's do one at. Uh, this is about 30 miles an hour. Oh wow. 70. Oh wow. Okay. Was not expecting that. It pulls. It pulls uh surprisingly very, very hard for a V6. 3.8 liter. That was and I was not expecting that. We we're building boosts, clearly. There must not be any vacuum leaks. Charge pipes must not be leaking. Other doodabs and electrical whatnots ain't leaking. Look out, puppet dog! All right, we'll try one from a dig. I have a feeling it's completely gutless until a boost kicks in. All right, I'm gonna just stand it up a little. See if it'll build any boost. And go. Oh, spinning them. Chirped them in the second. Wow. Broke up a little bit there on the top end. That was 75. This thing absolutely does 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds or whatever they said. Yes. Scientifically proven. She did break up a little bit on the end there. That was that was a little weird. But it sat for 22 years, you know what I mean? Wow. All right, I'm gonna get this thing home before I do something to it. <laughs> Man, this thing rips. Easy, I'm glad we fixed the brakes. Well, fellers and fellettes, we've made it home. Over 700 miles in a car that sat in a storage unit, sealed for 22 years. We didn't have that many problems, thankfully. So now the question I always ask, what do we do with this thing? You will absolutely see it around on the channel as well as the GN behind it. But do we keep it stock? Do we frame swap it? We've got some major rust and issues with the frame. Do we go crazy with this one? Fix up the GN? I don't, I don't know, but I absolutely love the car. Thanks for going on a trip with me, guys. Appreciate you all very, very much. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you haven't already. Drop a bleep bloop down below. I love reading those. We'll see you very soon.